enabling a plant to grow outside in all weathers, experiencing all things slowly as it's meant to, developing a strong root system and taking its time to grow to its full height and have its fruit. But you know it'll go on fruiting year after year. Whereas if you hothouse something, you might get a beautiful flower the first season, but then the flower will be spent and, and it won't have anything else to give. Steiner education allows children to be children. Being themselves, and I see that every day. It gives you a chance to be a child and not suddenly be chucked into this whole system of schooling and stuff. It's, it's a school where you can, you can look forward to going each day. Yeah, teachers just gives us awesome stuff to do. Because it's fun and you learn amazing things that you can go home and then tell your parents that, guess what I learned today? Working quite hard, it's quite fun. Yeah, every day, pretty much. I enjoyed every day. I mean, a lot of people ask the question, like, do you actually learn anything in Steiner? Like, they go, <laughs> you can't. That holistic approach of head, heart and hands, um, the way that the, the teachers bring in those different elements into almost every aspect of the curriculum. So you know, even with mathematics, when they're learning maths, are often there's an emotional component, um, you know, there's a physical movement component. It's a very holistic way of learning um, and it allows for the different learning styles of the children. It's that the children are immersed in a world of beauty. It's in everything that they create. It's what the teachers create around them, what the parents create. It's not just a teaching method, um, it's based on a really profound philosophy or understanding of human nature. And so the, the ideas behind it, which are often referred to as anthroposophy, those ideas apply to art, medicine, agriculture, um, spirituality, and education is just one part of that um, philosophy of, that Rudolf Steiner gave us. I remember my daughter's first day at Steiner School. The, the classroom environment was just so warm and welcoming and it was calm and there was just such a lovely atmosphere in the room. I was just, just completely won over. I knew I was in the right place. Right from the word go, she just ran off with all the others. She just, she was quite happy. She felt fine and so I felt fine. At Steiner I felt very secure. You had your place and there wasn't a better place or a worse place. Everyone just fitted in. I think everybody has a special place in their heart for this building simply because we've worked on it so hard and we've you know, done it all up and painted it. You walk into a classroom and you're like, oh, my dad knocked down that wall so this classroom was like this. Dad made the desks and they're, they're really cool because you've got your own desk and you just can lift it table up and then you've got all your pencils. Over the years I did get quite attached to the building. Yeah, it's going to be quite a tricky stage to just let go of it. Motu Eka Rudolf Steiner School is a small school in the top of the south in New Zealand and it has a wonderful community around it. A community that welcomed me from the other side of the world and I found my home here. Yeah, no, it's a really special kind of house. I mean, it was a hospital before. And so, but you can't really tell. I mean, we've done so much stuff to it. The community as a whole has done so much and like, oh, the working bees around there are crazy and doing so much stuff. I will feel sad about the school moving. You know, the reality is, is that we have to go. It's one of those things, I guess, no one really likes change and the thought of having to, to leave and to you know, move to a new location, it's a little unsettling. Um, but I think that, that, over, that unsettling feeling actually gets overtaken by a bit of excitement um, of the possibilities and the opportunity. So yeah, it's not all going to be easy by any means, um, but you know, we will do it and we will make something wonderful. 
we have a lot of things going on already. We've got um, a very active uh, handcraft group, doll makers group that make beautiful uh, handmade toys and dolls and sell them for fundraising. Uh, we have a stall at the Sunday market. Uh, we run you know, small fundraising events quite regularly. Uh, so we're doing a lot to try and raise the money, but we're aware that the sort of money that we, we need to build a new school um, requires us to reach much wider. You know, we'll have to reach out to the world to make this happen. There's a risk that some people are just going to go, well, that's just outrageous and are wasting their time. Um, you know, the traditional way of doing something is we need $2 million to build the building. You go out to the bank, you borrow the $2 million, you spend it and you get it. We can't go down that traditional route because we're, we're relying on our fundraising and people helping us. Well, I'm here to ask all these lovely people, lovely people out in the world there to be part of our ambitious plan to build this wonderful school. It will be unique. And everyone who is out there to wanting to be part of it, come with your initiative, with your thoughts, with your ideas, with your energy and be part of it. Live here in the most beautiful part on the top of the south, which is Motueka. I forgot the money, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs>